Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Uh, today, I wanted to take a little time to talk a little bit more about the life rhythm of Jesus and things that we are learning. As I had mentioned a couple of uh, weeks ago, one of the aspects of discipleship is not just learning from the teaching of the Master and the character of the Master, but actually learning the life rhythms and practices that help produce that character and uh, that underlie the teaching or flow out of the teaching, reinforce it. And so, uh, as disciples of Jesus, we want to pay attention not just to what he says and what his character is like, but also the life rhythms that he practiced in his own life, and then to try and imitate and work through those. And in Mark chapter 1, verses uh, 21 to 34, we see one of those life rhythms being practiced, which is a life rhythm uh, of Sabbath. And actually, we'll see some in the coming Sunday. We're going to see a little bit more of life rhythms of Jesus uh, as well. And so let's talk just a little bit about Sabbath. Number one, just notice the fact that Jesus practices Sabbath. That's something that we can easily, you know, as a young believer, I would read through the Gospels and that would have never been one of my takeaways. Jesus practices Sabbath, therefore I need to practice Sabbath. I just kind of thought of it as a Jewish thing, an Old Testament thing. But in fact, it is part of the life rhythm of Jesus. We're going to see a lot of arguments between Jesus and other religious leaders over what it means to practice Sabbath. Uh, and those are important, but we should not miss the fact that Jesus did practice Sabbath. He disagreed with some of their structures and laws and ways they were doing things, but he did practice Sabbath during his time here on earth. So uh, this is important because number one, Jesus obeyed all of God's law, and God's law includes the Sabbath. In the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, is that we are to uh, honor this Sabbath. And, and we see it's actually even built into creation back in Genesis uh, 1 and 2, where God tells Adam and Eve that they are to rest. The Lord rested on the seventh day, and he calls us to uh, practice Sabbath and rhythm as well. And so we're going to see in the Gospels that Jesus practiced Sabbath, but it was even more than just one day a week. There's a rhythm of rest in Jesus's life that this was part of his normal procedure and practice. He did it each week, but he also had a regular Sabbath rhythm of rest and solitude, and personal prayer, and even sleep. You can think right now how often we see Jesus in the boat and he's asleep, you know, and they're waking him up. The Lord practiced Sabbath and rest and sleep. And if you pay attention as you're reading through the Gospels, you might be surprised at how much we see about this. Now, let me be clear, because of the resurrection, we see in the New Testament that the church uh, no longer practices seventh day Sabbath. Uh, rather, it's moved to the first day of the week or what the early Christians referred to as the eighth day of the week. But the church still continued this, this rhythm and practice of Sabbath and rest, which has been lost to much of the modern church. So we need to recognize and practice it just as Jesus did. Number two, we need to recognize that one of Jesus's key practices regarding Sabbath was he gathered with God's people for worship, and he did this each and every week. We saw Mark simply mentioning in the passage that it was the Sabbath, and Jesus immediately went into the synagogue. But as I mentioned uh, in the teaching on Luke chapter 4 and verse 16, Luke tells us it was Jesus's custom to go into the synagogue on Sabbath. It was a regular part of this. So don't miss this. Jesus thought it was necessary to gather with the people of God. And I made a little bit of a joke about this on Sunday, but let's not miss the fact if the eternal Son of God, the Word of God made flesh, the perfect God-man thought it necessary to gather with God's people for worship, how could I possibly think that I don't have a need to gather together for worship? But we see that this has been a challenge for disciples of Jesus for a long time. The, the writer to Hebrews had to write to the Christians and say there, don't neglect to gather together for worship. You need to be gathering together. You need to be getting with God's people. If Jesus had this rhythm and he considered it essential, then how can I think anything else? Now, there are Christians today who don't gather because they think that, you know, local churches, I tried and this church had this problem and that church had a problem. And here's a fact, the church does have problems. 
And if you gather with the church or I gather with the church, it's going to have more problems. We're going to bring our problems in. We don't gather with the church because they have all their doctrine correct, because every practice is correct, because the people there don't have problems, because there are hypocrites. None of those things have anything to do with it. We gather because God has commanded us to. He has molded us in such a way that we should. And because as disciples of Jesus, we follow his life rhythms. If he thought it necessary to gather uh, with God's people in worship, so do we. And remember, as I mentioned on Sunday briefly, we're going to see seven different times in Mark's gospel that there are demonized people in the synagogues. We're going to see that the leaders of the synagogues and the teachers of the law and scribes who are in the synagogues are going to be fighting against Jesus. I have not yet personally run into a local church that had all of that going against it. Uh, And yet Jesus still went because it's God's call and command. So it's important for us as disciples, God's uh, gathering with God's people for corporate worship is not an option if we're going to be a disciple of Jesus. Thirdly, we're going to see that Jesus doesn't just do this on that weekly basis with God's people. He also practiced daily times with his father. In the very next verse, which we'll be picking up this coming week in Mark 135, we see Jesus going off to get by himself to pray. The crowds have their agenda for Jesus. They're trying to pull him in, but he's got to get off by himself to pray. In Luke 5, 16, we see that Jesus often went out to lonely places and prayed. So crowds of people with great needs are seeking Jesus. There's all kinds of things clamoring for his attention, but he makes time. And I use that phrase carefully. He makes time for quiet reflection for prayer, for fellowship with the Father, for rest. He gets out and he does that. Again, if the eternal Son of God believed that it was so important for him to have time with his Father on a regular basis, that he got up early while it was still pitch black outside and had to hike way out to the middle of nowhere to get that time, if he thought it was that important, it is meant to communicate to us as disciples that we need that as well. So I want to encourage you, it's not just a weekly Sabbath. We need a daily mini Sabbath, a daily quiet time of prayer, of scripture meditation, of fellowship with our Father God. It's not an option. It is a necessity. It is essential for disciples, and we're following the life rhythm of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to think about this, and again, continue to think about it as we go through, because this is one of the least thought about aspects of what it means to be a disciple is following Jesus's life rhythm. And it's important for us because our culture goes nonstop, 24-7. It militates setting aside a Sabbath, gathering for worship. It comes up with all these reasons why we can't do it. But disciples, therefore, have to be proactive both on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. Our culture is going to do everything to just make it not happen. We have to be proactive as disciples and say no to the insane rhythm and pattern of life that our culture is modeling for us, that our culture is trying to disciple us into so that we can say yes to Jesus's rhythm and pattern. Sabbath being a big rhythm, the first part of it is just saying no. It means to cease. It means to stop. And we need to practice that word of saying no to the rhythm and the pattern of our culture so that we can say yes to the rhythm and pattern of Jesus. So I encourage you, when you wake up tomorrow, take time to follow Jesus in his rhythm and pattern. Get before the Lord and then make sure to make it a priority to gather with God's people for worship as we do so this coming weekend. It is so important for us as disciples of Jesus. I hope it helps unpack this idea a little bit more, encourages you as you're trying to walk in the footsteps behind our master. I look forward to gathering for worship again this week as we'll complete Mark chapter one. Have a great week. God bless.